Hey guys, it is your girl Lala from This Black Girl Reads, and thank you so much for tuning in to the second part of the top 10 books of 2019. If you guys didn't watch the first one, I will leave the link in the description. You should definitely check it out. And guys, if we missed any books that you think should have been on the top 10, let us know in the comments. So without any further ado, let's get back into the conversation as I sit down and chat with my girls, Brandy and Tanya. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. So the last book that I'm going to uh, bring to your attention is a book by another uh, Canadian author uh, from Toronto, actually. And uh, this is a book by a gentleman uh, called Evan Winter. And the book is called The Rage of Dragons. This is an awesome book. It's like uh, Game of Thrones meets Gladiator. So I love my sci-fi books because it has uh, some magic in there. So really great for escape reading. Um, what I really like about this book is, first of all, it's not for somebody that wants a quick read. Look at the size <laughs> of this baby. Um, it is a saga. And um, it's a fantasy saga, but it builds upon a people who um, really are constantly at war. They've been at war for 200 years. I don't even know if they even remember what they're fighting for, but the whole uh, story building and the world building really revolves around um, some people are born with gifts, magical gifts, and some people are not. And uh, the gifts themselves are quite interesting, but the gifts are orienting around um, being able to fight. And um, if not being able to fight, then being able to go into other realms and use your magic to defeat others. So um, he, the author, Evan Winter, he goes through a lot of battle scenes. So uh, for readers that really like to see the play by play of sword fighting and tactical moves, it's quite interesting. You find yourself um, uh, sympathizing with the main character who's Tao um, and watching him come of age, uh, watching friends around him being murdered. There's the devious pieces. There's the first love pieces mm -hmm. in there. Uh, there's some powerful women in the story as well. Definitely um, a book that I was very excited to come across and very pleased with um, the story building in it. So if you know people that are really into fantasy, I highly recommend this book, but just a lengthier read. A lengthier. Yes. You know what I like that you chose local authors for some of your picks, which yeah. is great that you're highlighting them. Yeah. Yeah. So my last book that I'm going to talk about is Patsy. This is also uh, quite a thick read. Um, Patsy is by ne Nicole Dennis Ben, which is the same author as Here Comes the Sun. And in this book, it talks a lot about um, the immigration experience. So Patsy is um, a Jamaican woman, and she's been trying so hard to get her visa to come to the States. So she gets her visa. She ends up leaving her three-year-old daughter behind um, with her dad that she's never met before. And she says, okay, I'm going to come back for you, not telling her daughter that she's not coming back for her. So she leaves and she goes to New York um, to kind of build a life with um, her old love, which is also a woman. Yeah. So it talks a lot about um, mm, LGBT. Yeah, yeah. So it talks a lot about that. And when she gets to New York, the woman is married. She has a life and um, her husband kind of hates Patsy. So uh -oh. <laughs> kicks Patsy out of the house and Patsy kind of has to find a job and fend for herself, right? So she realizes that it's not as easy as it should be. And she starts taking like odd jobs at a restaurant. She rents a room from like this shady, shady um, landlord. And next thing you know, 10 years passes by and she still hasn't contacted her daughter. Oh, her daughter, wow. her daughter is back in Jamaica living with her father and living with um, his wife and their children. And she's kind of like the black sheep because mm -hmm. she's not their actual child. Mm. And um, the mother tries to, to, tries to teach her and tries to kind of be a mother to her, but she constantly pushes her away. Um, Patsy is very, no, sorry, her daughter is very upset that her mom hasn't come back for her and she kind of starts to rebel. Um, she attempts to take her own life and um, Patsy then contacts the daughter and it's a lot about um, trying to build yourself in a new community, but also not trying to forget where you came from and still trying to be a mother to someone who is across 
back home, right? So yeah, I thought that it was a really excellent, excellent read. Was it sort of that feeling of, of uh, drama and, and yeah. relationships? Yes. and it's a lot of relationships. And Patsy herself has a lot of, like, identity issues. Mm. She's not, because she, w- she wasn't able to come out that she's actually gay, right? Until mm. she, until she's like, gets into a relationship in New York and she kind of admits it to herself. But mm. she wasn't able to come out that she's gay. And um, her daughter ends up being... a like exploring her sexuality as well Mm. and yeah it's really really interesting there's a lot of different issues a lot of things about immigration that people don't talk about right yeah Mm -hmm. so that's what i appreciated about it sounds great so to round out the uh final picks i picked a book that was much anticipated I actually went with The Water Dancer by Tennessee Oh, Coates. I want to read it. that. And I decided that I was going to uh, listen to it yes. through audiobook. Um, what I will say, good effort. Uh, Joe Mar- Morton from uh, Scandal, Papa Pope. He actually... Oh, he did the book, yeah, the audio? He oh, is okay. the narrator okay. oh. of the whole thing. So um, it's done in first person and... I actually enjoyed it. It was not a bad effort at all. So stepping out of his um, comfort zone, for those who don't know, ta Coates is a awesome cultural yes. icon in the African-American um, experience right now. And he decided to write his first book. He's actually working on a second one right now. His first um, fiction. fiction novel. Yeah. So he pens a story about Hiram Walker, um, based in the 1800s in Virginia. So Hiram is a slave whose um, parents are actually a white slave owner mm. and a black slave. Yeah. And um, it basically talks, chronicles Hiram's journey um, of being, as, as they call him, a slave, but in the, in the book they actually call them the tasked, to um, family members, his actual blood family, um, who are called the quality. So he's serving them. So he serves them. Mm-hmm. So he is like his um, his half-brother's personal butler. Mm-hmm. Does wow. everything for him. Um, and it takes you through, kind of skims through his life as a child and um, into teens and as a young man. But then it takes a tragic um, turn. And through that tragic turn, what we find is that um, it unlocks a portal um, through the past and the present simultaneously for Hiram. Mm. Um, I thought it was a really good book. Amazing character development. Um, All the characters as an ensemble, they were really good, but they could stand alone on their own as well. I also um, like the plot development. What I will say was when I got to the end, because I was very vested in these characters, I was a little <laughs> underwhelmed by yes. how it ended. Yeah. And too. that's why you said it's a good effort. It's a good, it's a, <laughs> for a first time out, Yeah. great effort. Okay. However, um, as I said, a little underwhelmed. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't read it. And so I, I put it got there. this book when it, like the day it came yep. out. Myself and well. I tried to start it three times. Mm-hmm. And like, it was really difficult to get past the first two chapters and I was like reading online to other people and they're like yeah it was hard but once you get past there it's good which was right because once I got past there it was good but the first two chapters were a little bit of a challenge so I found the through. same thing yeah um I don't know how far I got yeah into the book but I know that I stopped for a bit put it down and then yes. went back to it like two weeks later yes I did and see. decided to finish it um but yeah, I would say the same thing. Um, a little dry yes. in the beginning. Oh, okay. Um, a lot of background. Yeah. But yeah. once you get past that, it really starts to um, pick up speed. It's well paced. Yeah. Um, as I said, great character development, good story plot. Just I thought it was a really I thought it was a good yes. book. I it wasn't like how this book's the bomb. But then yes. after I read that book, I read his other book, Between the World and Me. Yep. And oh my gosh, that's like my new favorite book. Yeah, that's an that's an that amazing is an amazing book. book. Yeah. So um, I didn't love 
The Water Dancer as much as I love that book, mm. but it was still a pretty good read. But I think the reason that I would I have said that it's a very good effort mm-hmm. is because he traditionally he is not a fiction writer. Yes. So he went outside of he his went, comfort yeah. zone as a writer. Absolutely. Yeah. Writing he's, in a different he's genre. He's known for nonfiction yeah. and yeah. essays. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. um yeah. Well I kudos think, to him yeah, kudos for to trying him. something different. Yeah. And you'll try again and maybe he'll hit it out of the park next yeah. time. Cool. It was a very good effort. You're right. It was a really good effort. So our last book, yes. do you want to talk about it? Um, I'll start it off. Yeah. Uh, so the last book that we all read that we thought we would round out in our in our top 10 is Becoming by Michelle yeah. Obama. And uh, I have some mixed feelings actually about this book. I was really? super, super excited, but I want to, maybe we'll start with what your thoughts were. And Did you like it? I actually loved it. Really? I did. I thought she played it safe. Me too. Really? Okay, okay. That's I why I didn't want to go first. <laughs> I liked it. I felt that um, she was she was honest. I thought that um, there were parts where I, I was looking for her to flesh out yes. a little more. But I felt she was honest. I loved um, her talking about her parents. And sure. that, that really captivated me. Yeah. Um, her talking about her parents, her life. Um, Pre Barack, mm-hmm. I loved um, the song and dance between them. Yeah, those chapters, the song and dance between them when they had met. Um, just and I think she did a really good job of um, making him real. Like I mean, to the black community, he's human and he's amazing. But I think she did a really good job of making him human to other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love that. And showing his tenacity in everything that he does. Yeah. Um, yeah. I just thought it was a really good effort. Um, sometimes I can find biographies a little dry. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I, I think really it was like very this. surface. I think that she had the opportunity to go a little deeper and tell a little bit more. But I feel yeah. like if I just sat down and talked to her, like that would probably be the same thing that I got. That you would have got from the book. Yeah. Yeah. So I I like the part that she talked about infertility. Um, I I appreciated that part because I think it's something that we don't talk enough about in the black community. Like, I thought that was great. But I feel like she missed the opportunity to go a little deeper. I would agree. I felt, I felt as I read the book, I really did enjoy the book. Mm-hmm. So it's not that I didn't enjoy it. I felt that, okay, Michelle is writing for a wide audience here. And that's how I felt she played it safe. Um, I thought she could have got a bit more gritty on yeah. certain topics. That, And I wondered if maybe her editor maybe thought, oh, yeah. maybe you don't want to go there because you may alienate some of your other readers. Yeah. Um, I felt it was a well-written book. It did give us a glimpse into the life of the First Lady, but I did, I wanted more. I yeah. wanted her to give us information that maybe would have been more uncomfortable. Yes. And I felt she played it a little on the safe side. I agree. I do totally you agree. think that um, it may have had something to do with just her personality? She hmm. has that you know her perfectionist yes you know her whole slogan is when they, when they go low we, we go, go high, high. <laughs> so maybe she didn't want to sling mud yeah it's possible um, it's possible i i will say i was looking for a little more um i wouldn't say dirt i would say <laughs> just Meat. yes yeah. candor yeah on donald trump Oh. I felt like she she's kind of glossed. Clear. She's yes, she, clear. she said like like a tidbit she's and then she glossed it. over it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I can't say that I would do that. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. you came for my husband and my family. Yeah, and I need to out you. And I think this was her perfect opportunity. Yeah. And that's why I think she played right. it a little. It on was a little PR-ish. Yeah, yeah. 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 But yeah. still, great book, and we definitely recommend that you get this book. Yeah. I wonder. So, what are you excited about next? Your next reads. Uh, my next reads. I don't really have anything on the docket right now, but I will say that um, I have seen a lot coming out for 2020 in terms of Black Lit, and I'm really excited Mm -hmm. um, to delve in. Still on the... um, I think I'm going to get into a lot more biographies. Yes. And may go back and visit, revisit a few um, old favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for coming coming. together. and, And those are our top books of 2019. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.